I'm delighted to be joined here with General Manager Phil Crow, uh, providing an update ahead of the end of the 2022-23 season. First of all, Phil, how's things? How are you? Yep, all good. Thanks, Josh. Uh, had a few days away in uh, Spain last week, trying to uh, improve the golf this time of year. But uh, no, all good. Yeah, looking forward to the obviously the last game of the season now coming up this Saturday, and then obviously now with the, the playoffs to look forward to. Yes, obviously, as you say, playoffs now, the guarantee in it. I mean, it's been a long, hard, gruelling season on and off the pitch. Uh, but where where are your thoughts at where of where the club is ahead of that final game here on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, on the pitch, it's been, as you say, a, an up and down season. Obviously, we, we started well, uh, a spell, I think, around January time where... Uh, you know, uh, perhaps results didn't go our way, and then obviously, um, you know, we've picked up quite quite nicely going into the, the business end of the season. But uh, I think if you'd have offered anybody, you know, full fifth or even third place at the start of the season, they'd, you know, they'd probably rip your arm off. Obviously, as you say, there's still quite that bit of permutation ahead of the last game of the season as to whether we're going to be here playing on a Tuesday, Wednesday or even potentially straight through to the semi-final stage on Sunday. But in terms of those playoff games, uh, what provisions have we obviously got in place ahead of potentially needing to host a game here, as that is now most likely? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, I, I made the athletics club and the, 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 the management that run the facility, um, the dates back in August, you know, I, I was made aware very early that there'd been some issues in the past with uh, availability. Um, there is an athletics meeting that's always um, booked for the, I believe it's the bank holiday weekend in May, which has caused, caused the problems in, in the past. Um, but yeah, you know, thankfully this year, it was all very transparent. Dates were booked early. Um, obviously, the track works now have been ongoing. They won't be complete anyway, so you know it's, it's not an issue. And uh, as I say, it, it would never have been an issue. So that's very much a lot of the on the field stuff, and we can definitely come back to that shortly. But in terms of off the field, I mean, it's been a long period of time now since you came in back in. Correct me if I'm wrong. July, yeah. so. How happy are you with all of the progression that we've made off the field? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, as, as I've said before, Josh, I think there were some quite easy wins for me coming in. I think there was a few things where, you know, there was a bugbear of the supporters, the volunteers, you know, things that perhaps had been earmarked to have been done uh, but hadn't been. Um, obviously, yeah, I mean, the, the infamous carpet has, has been done now, which is which is good. We're going through a phase at the moment where we're doing some redecoration in, in the clubhouse. Um, you know, it's very clinical down there at the moment, but you know, we're having a, a time wall, we're like a timeline wall um, put together, which will go on one of the walls, and we'll we will have some football. You know, the memorabilia and Chelsea City memorabilia go go back up. Um, you know, we won't lose track, uh, uh, won't uh, get away from the fact it's a football club. Um, so yeah, look, you know, it's that's ongoing work. As I say, you know, the dugouts um, are new. The tunnel's been replaced. Um, the hydraulic jack that moves the crow row around uh, needed some serious repairs done to it to make it safe for volunteers. Which is, you know, obviously their safety is paramount at the end of the day. So as I say, yeah, all, all those things have been done. Um, in terms of, you know, supporting Adam and, and Robbie in recruitment, you know, the facilities players always look at the quality of the pitch, um, how they're looked after on match day so, and, and training. Um, you know, the coaches they travel on now are, are now luxury coaches. Um, the pitch has, has improved drastically from this time last year. Um, the players eat together after training. You, you know, all those little things that as a player re really matter to you, you know, we've really try to improve the, the whole experience and I mean that, so that's obviously they're very much the here and now um, but we've got a very busy summer coming up ahead of us obviously between potentially the end of the playoffs and the start of pre-season being in early July time you've got a period we've got a period of about six weeks there's as I say a lot to do in that time but what changes will you be looking to make um, I don't think there'll be anything drastic Josh if I'm honest with you um, obviously you know we haven't got 
endless funds available. Um, you know, we've we've got sort of, sort of a lot of short term, medium term, and a long term sort of progression we're looking at. We've we've facilities. Um, obviously, from a playing perspective, you know, at the moment we don't know what league we'll be playing in next year. You know, um, the the whole dynamic changes if you if you get promoted, as you can appreciate, there's a lot more travelling. You know, some of the some of the players probably couldn't commit to that level of football, which is why they're playing at this level. Um, so yeah, that I mean that dynamic changes. You know, we've got some meetings planned with uh, with the owners. Um, and obviously, Robbie and you know the chairman to to plan or there's sorry to plan but to sort of engage and and, and move forward. So yeah, it's it's very open ended at the moment. Um, so uh, yeah, it's just going to be work in progress through the summer. And I mean, I think you kind of touched on it that should we go up, a lot of things may be quite different to should we remain in the same league, but. A very big question that I know a lot of people have probably already mentioned to yourself, and I know it's been quite a talk for a while, that should we be promoted, um, what do we have in place in terms of being able to meet the National League's stadium regulations, obviously with that being slightly different in the division above to where we are now? Yeah, I mean, it's something that we've we've spoken about. I had a meeting some months ago now with the, I believe it's the SAG group, the Stadium Advisory Group, um, the local council, um, Fire Brigade, um, obviously the the Athletic Centre because they manage the facility and uh, you know as as in the past historically the club's been in the playoffs and there was always a plan in place. You know, Mansell Wallace uh, regularly reminds me that you know he 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 wrote the original plan and he's happy to support moving forward. Um, yeah, there's, there is a plan. So should we get promoted, it won't be an issue. Obviously, there's certain things that will have to happen by I think. March next year for the ground grading, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But as I say, there, there's a plan in place. Uh, there'll be some work to implement the plan, but you know that, that's what I'm here to do. So uh, you know, we'll, we'll get on and do it. You touched briefly in what you were saying earlier about the kind of facilities being important for players, obviously all of the recruitment work that both Adam and Robbie have done throughout the season. There's been a lot of good feeling, as you can imagine, being where we are in the league table and having kind of been up here at the top of the table really for the most part, if not the majority of the season. How important has that recruitment work from Adam and Robbie been in keeping us where we are in the league now? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's uh, it, it's key to any football club is recruitment, and um, you know, listen, Dr Drewy is the best at what he does um, in and around non-league football, in certainly in this area, if not further afield. You know, a lot of, a lot of people would would love his services at their football club. You know, he's he's got some unbelievable contacts. Um, he can tap into the loan market where he needs to. You know, we've seen that with Ovi and, and Eddie. Um, he he also he's also got you know he can unearth that young talent we've seen in in, in Ben Brooks coming in from the lower level. Um, you know, at certain times it, it's certainly been disappointing to lose players, especially earlier in the season. Obviously. Um, you know Ch Charlie Ruff and uh, Devonte going er earlier in the year, but I think you know the supporters will probably agree. At, at, you know at the time I, I completely get their their disappointment, their, their frustrations, but you know we, we're not in a position where we can match these huge you know sums of money that these boys were offered. Um, obviously full time football as well. Um, so yeah, you know with that being the case, you know Adams been pivotal in bringing players in and then obviously you know Robbie working with those players to, to maximise what you know the potential and what he's got out of them so you know Adam, Robbie and the whole management team deserve a lot of credit for, for how they've managed to maintain you know that competitive edge at the top of the league. You very much touched on how we throughout the season it has obviously been very well known that we can't necessarily match some of the fees that are being offered to certain players and we, we kind of are fairly well known that we don't have one of the largest budgets in the league obviously we are a part-time football club at the end of the day but where does the club currently sit in terms of its budgets that were set out for the start of the season? Yeah I mean I think 
the, the, the budget was set at the start of the season that I think will probably be slightly over, I should imagine. Um, but you know we can probably offset that against some of the revenue that's been generated by good cup runs. Obviously, moving into the weekend, you know we're expecting a, a good crowd for the Taunton game. Probably, you know, a much larger crowd than we would have expected had we been mid-table. Um, we're guaranteed a home playoff game. Um, obviously, you know we have to share some of the funds with the opposition and the league. Um, but again, it should be a, a, a good revenue generator for the club. Um, you know, the, the hospitality has been practically sold out every single week. I think first game of the season this, this year we had, you know, 35 people in our hospitality. We've got capacity of 80 and it's it's been sold out for the last, I don't know, seven, eight games. And we've opened it up to just bar use only as well, so there's been over 100 people up there some weeks so again it all you know the the team doing well it, it it generates revenue so yeah we'll probably be over the budget that was set at the start of the season but I think it can be offset by those increased revenue streams. Obviously talking about finance we're in April now obviously into the new financial year ahead of what will be the, the end of the season to set budgets then into the new season where does the club stand with rectifying the financial position that it currently finds itself in with the financial statements being known in the public eye and how they've been taken by not just fans but also people at the club? Yeah I mean obviously you know, show me a football club that, that doesn't lose money I don't think there's there's many of them Josh and you know, I think Manchester United are a billion pound in debt but um, no look you know sustainability for, for any football clubs the holy grail um, you know the club's very lucky it's got you know some benefactors who sit there um, you know Dan and, and John that are prepared to keep funding the football club um, but yeah I mean that's that's part of what I'm here to try and do as well to make the club sustainable, um, you know, I, I have spoken to the supporters club about how we can work together to, to do that. You know, I think the supporters club and the support of the fans is, is you know, is, is paramount to, to what we're going to try and achieve. Um, again, I think there's probably some some easy wins there where we can, you know, we're looking at getting sort of solar panels on the roof of the football club because you know the electric bill is, is extortionate that, that can become cost neutral very quickly um, you know there's there's lots of things we could look at where we can sort of reduce cost and, and increase revenue um, I've been you know very lucky this year our commercial activity is 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 up massively um, you know Matt Collins and, and Richard Scott have, have been really helpful to me and to the club in bringing sponsors and, and people to the party so to speak you know we've got a, a, a CRM system now where we can you know put all our contacts and all our details and just just manage that correctly um, there's a couple of commercial activities going on in the background which hopefully will come to fruition and and and, and start generating some good funds for the club you know look I know Potentially, the club's been delinquent uh, over recent years, but let's not, you know, not forget it's been extremely difficult with the with the pandemic and that, and that situation. So, I, I can't really comment historically. I, you know, I don't know a huge amount what went on in the past. You know, I'm a great believer is you, you can't change history. All you can do is learn from it. So, you know, let's let's learn from any mistakes that have been made and, and, and move forward. Perfect. I mean, that's all of the questions that I've got for you for this. If there's anything else that you maybe want to touch on in terms of an update, if not, then we can kind of look forward to some playoffs. Yeah, no, not at all, Josh. Um, you know, just like to thank the supporters for, for their support to me during the season. You know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of the the fans, when I, when I came in, they were sort of unhappy with certain situations. But I must be honest, you know, the, the feedback I've had is, has been excellent and um, I've really enjoyed being involved with a club and uh, look forward to, to the playoffs and obviously doing as well as we can and, and push on into next season. Perfect. Thanks, Phil. Cheers, Josh.